Well, I apologize for not posting videos for the last uh, couple of weeks, but I had a huge amount of business travel to do, unfortunately. So, anyway, it's over and done. I can get back to the project here. Um, so these are these Margard, uh, Lexan, Polycarbonate, whatever you want to call it, um, windows from AWS Plastics in Bristol, England. And they did a beautiful job. The previous ones I got out of um, the LWS design guys that did my carbon fiber panels and they had outsourced them to someone else. And the difference is that the uh, edges, I'll, I'll show you these ones down here. Um, these guys not only use the proper scratch resistant material, which um, LWS never did, and they charged me for it and then they wouldn't replace them. Um, but these ones are, the edges are beveled. As normal glass would be so all the sheets you get you know it's a seven piece kit so the quarters plus the main roll up front windows sides and then the rear rear so anyway they're really nice looking and um, you know as I assemble the doors now I can use all the stuff so I've got my spacers for the speakers as well and basically what I'll be doing is trimming these down a little bit so that the speaker can fit in underneath from the back and I'm thinking instead of putting the tweeter here, you know, like here's the door cards here. So instead of, you know, cutting a hole and putting, putting the surface mount tweeter here, I think I'm going to actually put the tweeter in the dash speaker area. Sort of changed my mind. I mean, that's what the picture of the uh, Hertz uh, tweeter looks like. It's sort of ugly. Um, so I'm thinking of hiding it in the dash and then having the woofer, you know, I'll be somehow putting the holes of the woofer in behind you know, this area here, uh, I'm trying to make it look really pretty, but I definitely want a sound system and I want decent uh, decent sound, right? So these Hertz speakers are going to throw a lot of power and I am planning on using a removable subwoofer in the rear. May not need it, these speakers are actually throw a ton of bass and I'm not a huge thumping bass guy anyway, but um, the alternative is there to put a sub that's removable in the back. So, so there we go, that's that. So this is the um, setup for the nitrous, the high pressure air from the Air Venturi bottle at uh, 2900 PSI goes into here, into the dead and bare um, solenoid, kind of like a nitrous solenoid, but just higher pressure. And that's normally closed, so whenever the pressure drops below 950, this will open temporarily and push, push air in and keep the nitrous pressurized at 950, which is where I want it to be. And this is the pressure switch. So um, basically, you, there's a screw here, and you just turn it up and down between 550 and 1250 psi where you want it. So whenever this thing drops below 950, these contacts will close, causing this to open. It goes above 950. It's about a 50 psi um, hysteresis, and that will keep this thing regulated pretty tight. I think it should regulate within about 20 psi. So that'll keep my nitro system happy and uh, I'm kind of ready to go to sort of bolt all this in. Uh, I gotta get going and finishing the intake system and then get all the plumbing done in the next few days and then this nitro system will be charged up. I'll, I'll put uh, put the nitrous in the tanks and test all the fittings and make sure that uh, the solenoids work and then I'm actually going to calibrate the system by taking the solenoid and running it in um, a bunch of different pulse widths uh, and just measuring how fast it drains the tank and, and therefore I'll know how much nitrous has been consumed at each pulse width and then that allows me to have a calibrated nitrous system between sort of 20% and 100% computer controlled rather than guessing. Even though the um, Holly Dominator system runs a wideband uh, oxygen sensor and will actually do uh, fuel uh, corrections uh, on the fly when the nitrous is engaged, so it's not going to run lean or it's not going to run rich beyond a narrow band I said. At least the system will be close to where it needs to be so it doesn't have to fight too hard to stay in regulation. Well, I got the uh, windshield wiper system after it was rebuilt, the motor, and everything got lubricated and I'd actually uh, done some zinc plating as well to just freshen it up and uh, new rubber uh, washers and things and um, or grommets and got it all put back together and installed and a little Loctite on things and so it's all good. It's in there now. It looks good. Um, over here, you can see where I'm, let me just walk around a bit. 
Um, I'm planning on, there's my plastic pipe, by the way, that runs from the air box here over to the air filter. So that's where the k and air filter is going to sit. There'll be a clear polycarbonate uh, shield to keep the, uh, the warmer air from the engine away from the air intake. Um, so it'll go up to the, uh, the top of the, uh, the hood uh, height and then draw air from down and around and un underneath that area there. So big filter, 4 inch intake running to the polycarbonate air box that I'm going to be cutting and gluing and bending and heating and stuff this week. So this is the week now that I'm back from all my traveling to actually get this whole intake system finished and to also get the, uh, the cooling system finished as well hopefully. So I ended up with a 120 degree fitting down below here. Um, problem was it was the 90 degree fitting was running into the alternator. So unfortunately the radiator sits back a little bit too far. These bosses as you see are, they stick out quite a ways. I didn't realize they were going to stick out that far. And uh, anyway, there's, I can get my finger in between the alternator and this, so when the engine rocks a bit, it's not going to hit it. So basically, this connection down below here is a dash 12, and the one above it's a 6 dash 16. The dash 16, as you see, maybe you can't see very easily, but it connects to the um, front of the cylinder head. So these two fittings will be just a small amount of hose between them, so pretty tight coupling there. And then this fitting here will run between the fans and we'll come along here and uh, connect over here. Sorry, the camera's all banging and crashing here, but that's basically that, that, that run there. So there we go. And uh, bang, bang, crash, crash, that's what I'll be doing this week. So there was a question um, about whether or not these um, medium performance, uh, like low profile spall fans, when they're presented with the restriction of a two and a half inch radiator core, whether they'd flow uh, air. Because when I was showing the pulse width modulated speed control, uh, the fan shroud was lying against um, a leather chair in my office, and so it wasn't moving any air just because it had no air flow. So, anyway, I, I went and hooked this setup back up. So, I've got a battery here, and I've got a little piece of paper there, and all I'm going to do is just run it. Um, uh, slow by just tapping it um, against the battery post and then speed it up. But I'll just go try to simulate low speed airflow first. So that's low, right? Like that would be like maybe 15% or something, maybe 20%, and then full. It's blowing like crazy. And if you put your hand on the other side of the radiator, um, here it's pulling your hand against the uh, the radiator core, so uh, um, these fans are in this shroud are are going to work just fine. Uh, possibly it's overkill, so it's good. I I think we've proven that this this will work fine.